Hello, I am Matt Kahn, and welcome to Project Resolution. It is my absolute honor to be here with you during this call on every Project Resolution call, but with this call being very special because we are in such an interesting, pivotal shift in Earth's history, and so much healing is occurring on a societal level, and it's truly an honor to bring us together and have us all come together from all cities and states and continents and countries to truly participate in the upliftment of humanity, which in turn simultaneously always benefits our journeys as well. And when such an interesting pivotal shift and with all the things that are happening all around the world, not just in the United States and, you know, all that's coming up to be healed, it just seems as if each and every skeleton that's been hiding in the collective closet of humanity is just being pulled out to be addressed and seen and and as a way of helping humanity usher itself through this collective dark night of the soul and as a very pivotal entry point into the ascension into fifth dimensional consciousness. And I just want to start by reminding each and every one of us that everything we're seeing in the world right now, every single thing, whether you are seeing things that you personally agree with or whether you are seeing things that you think, oh, I, I, would, I would prefer if people were to conduct themselves in this different way. And I just say that because I, I, I represent a love and a compassion that embraces all experiences. What we are going through right now is not less than the most pivotal healing the world has ever known. What we are going through is a level of healing that is needed to happen for so long. And just the consciousness of the planet and so many individuals is getting so high in vibration. We, we cannot allow any of this to be swept under the rug, minimized, or looked past any longer. And when we are truly aligned with our souls, we know that no matter how much the things that happen in the world seem to threaten or inconvenience our egos, we know from a soul level that this is also very pivotal and important for the healing of all beings. And when we are truly aligned with the vibration of love, we are coming from such a place of empathy where what happens to what we might, what some people might say other people is really happening to the fellow brothers and sisters you may not know that you have had outside of your immediate family. What happens to quote unquote other people is an experiencing happening to other layers of your infinite energy field. And so anyone's issue is truly our issue that we can heal and resolve together as one. And I'm so honored to be here with you during this time. There is nowhere else I want to be but in the thick of things, helping to facilitate progress. And of course, from the most loving and compassionate space, to not rush that healing process out of profound respect for all the experiences that people have and continue to have on this planet. As we get started, this call will be a very interesting unpacking. And I, and I had an, a download from the universe. I had to lead this call. It's, it's going to be a sharing. This call is going to be one where you're going to walk away feeling energetically renewed. And it's going to be a call where it's gonna, it, it, there will be a repeat after me, a series of them at the end, in which we're going to invoke the energy of Archangel Michael to help facilitate positive change for all beings on the planet. But before we do that, I'm going to share with you, and it's going to give you a chance. And like on some calls, we do visualizations and meditations for global change. But this is going to be one where it's going to really enhance our ability to listen. Because this call, if I'm going to offer you something of the highest relevance for right now, I think what's the most relevant thing for us as beings that wish to support the evolution of humanity is learning how to hold space for others, including ourselves. How to hold space at a time like this. It's so very important. And to really introduce this, 
I want to start out by reading you a quote I channeled this morning, and then I'm going to kind of just share what's coming through me, as I always do. So let me read this to you, and then we can unpack. No matter our life circumstances, we always have something to share and something to give. If feeling as if there's nothing to give, it only means something deeper is in need of being shared. I love those words because right now we, we in this, we as the light bearers of a new humanity are, are experiencing a tremendous amount of healing, a healing that involves all of us. Even as manif- even as it's manifested as racial tension and inequality, this is all of our issue to resolve and we're all a part of this. It affects us all, truly. And admittingly, some more than others. And yet we're all participants in the healing of this. And, and that is a great honor that we all have. And it's truly my greatest honor to be a part of this global healing. Because these are things that have happened in the world that even when I was a young child, before I really was aware of how connected to the universe I was, was always things that really, really upset me. Injustice always upset me. I was always upset upset by bigotry and persecution and reading about things in history and just not being able to truly fathom how this even happened and who, who let it happen and the questions we all have. And at a time like this, it is so natural to feel powerless. And also what's really interesting about this time, and this is why for, for me having this call as we unite light workers to say, here's how we can hold space. And I think it's really interesting because we, we are truly in our evolution in this shift of ascension. It's not just bringing up the healing and dealing with such dark things that are so hard to face sometimes. But it's also a shift where we as light workers are realizing that each and every conceptual understanding we have of spiritual expansion is literally running out of usefulness. Because when we exist in a time like this with profound racial tension, when we are coming together as a global community to truly make decisions that change our society so that others don't have to be persecuted or affected adversely ever again and to face the pain that lingers inside the bodies of so many and the lineages and the history of all of this the more real the healing becomes the more gritty the more dark the less that the conceptual teachings are going to be relevant and that can be very mesmerizing for, for some spiritual beings who, who may embrace certain teachings as, wow, this really touched my life, and I tried to share it with someone, and it didn't really land the way I thought it was going to land. And it's because the universe is helping us understand at this really pivotal time, one of the greatest things we can do to hold space, and what the essence of holding space is, is it's learning how to let people know that you're willing and interested to listen. This is a time when others in pain need to be heard. And it's a time when we let people know that we're here to hear them that allows them to wake up out of the subconscious spiral of trauma and to realize out of a history of persecution they begin to realize how safe they are to begin and deepen the healing process. And what I've seen sometimes on social media, and I, and, I, and I don't say it as a criticism, I say it as an opportunity to expand the parameters of how we look at spiritual growth, what it means to help someone, what is really helpful. We often find these really superstitious ideas even in how we frame and think of love. You know, I've seen in various discussions where people are going to say, stop being negative and just hold the light of love. And it really, it really affects me in a very deep way because 
I am not someone who has ever known love to be a light that is opposite of the darkness. I represent a love that is the very grace that is willing to step into the shadows of any darkness and embrace whatever pain is there to be seen, to be heard, and to know that it is safe to heal. And the healing begins by others sharing their stories, their truths, and their experiences. For us who may not have had the personal experiences that others have had, to learn, to grow, and to empathize, and to let other people's pain share what is ready to be healed. And I think what I, and I also can say as one who has worked in the healing realm for many, many years, what I often notice about certain processes of healing is that certain processes of healing, whether it's taught this way or interpreted this way, is often a series of steps used to try to rush either yourself or someone else out of the discomfort of pain and into a better experience. And while the healing journey does lead you out of the discomfort of pain and into a greater experience, trying to rush the process is whether for ourselves or others is unintentionally sometimes showing such disrespect for the pain that wants to be as equally valid as the relief that we seek. In fact, just to touch upon this, this morning on social media, I posted a quote that said, true compassion is healing on the wounds time frame, no matter how much you wish things were different. True compassion is healing on the wounds time frame, no matter how much you wish things were different. And so this is not a time, in, we're not in a time in history where whether it's your own healing or what's happening on a global level, this is not a, and, and, and healing in general is not a get over it scenario. That's very much what the spiritual ego tries to employ because it gets very impatient and it gets very unsafe in pain, right? We have the best of intentions of wanting to help people feel better. And sometimes we want people to feel better because we want to feel better in their presence. And as empaths, we sometimes can come from that place. But this is truly a time in history where these wounds have been buried for so many lifetimes and so many generations that we really need to take some time to really be present with what's coming out and not rush the process. And whether it's someone you are talking to in your family, in your community, on social media, or in your own life, we cannot rush this process because we have to use this as a time in history where we all are learning how to hold space for one another. And sometimes you're not going to have the energy to hold space for others. Sometimes you're not going to have the bandwidth to face what is happening all around the world, and you're just going to have to hold that space for yourself. But either way, whether for yourself, for another, for humanity, for the atrocities of the past, we, le we learn how to hold space as the love and kindness and compassion and respect for people's experiences that we demonstrate through the gift and grace of listening where it's not about giving someone a better way to see something. It's not about if you look at it from this perspective or if you could only do it this way. We're not here to micromanage anyone's healing experience, including your own, because it's an unintentional act of disrespect. What is true right now is that repressed feelings and unconscionable memories need to be shared. And when we are the one that says, please help me understand your experience, I would love to know how you feel. Please tell me what is your greatest worry and concern. Let me just be with you. And if not, thank you for the opportunity to know you and to honor you during this time. This is the respect that we all need. And this is the respect that I invite us all to share as we are all coming to terms with healing unconsciousness and becoming more mindful, conscious beings for the well-being 
of every human being on this planet. And even I, you know, I see on social media, and again, I'm just saying this to shine light on the unconsciousness of the spiritual ego. Even when sometimes, you know, people will say, well, all lives matter. And I just want to share with you from my perspective what I've taken, what, what, what I have always felt to be true. And I, and I don't sometimes talk about this, but during this time in history, we have to talk about everything because it's relevant. You know, as, as the person that plays the role that I play in the world, the one thing I always am is sincere and I always want to be relevant because I'm here to serve and the conversation can't get uncomfortable for me because I, I don't find discomfort in truth. I only find places in which love and healing needs to go. And so in this certain time we're in, you know, there can be this, you know, wanting to always look at it from a bigger spiritual perspective of oneness and saying, well, all lives matter. And what I want to share with you, and again, this is not, this is not something I'm about to share that I just learned. This is something I've always known in my heart, is that when you have people in this world, souls that have incarnated to participate in being people of a certain gender or race or culture, and that culture has been persecuted and judged and defamed and you know i i in my family was born in, in the jewish religion and my parents would tell me stories of how they experienced being tr mistreated by that and you know then we involve race and just another layer of this and unimaginable unimaginable pain but what I've always known is, is when you have an experience where you have been cast aside and treated less than because of your appearance, a group that has been mistreated in that degree needs to be honored for who they are and how, 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 how profoundly they express the uniqueness of the oneness within us all. And so when, when I see a group that's been persecuted, my feeling is just like when we would think of that which has been repressed must be expressed in order to clear the space and to allow hurt to be healed. I think it's really important that we don't minimize the importance of letting every level of uniqueness and diversity of this world be seen to be absolutely relevant and to be honored, to be honored and to say, for those that have been so mistreated for these unconscionable reasons, let's lift them up, give a voice, and allow that which has been mistreated to be turned into a moment of honor. And from my perspective, when we just say all lives matter, we, I, I, in my experience, we are missing the essential value and point of allowing true pain to be heard, honored, and valued. And I just want to share that with you. And if there's anyone out there who sees it differently, I honor that difference. But throughout my life, I have always felt a deep burning desire to honor all the uniqueness and diversity of the world and to let every group of uniqueness and diversity to be honored, whether it is your right to be in relationship with whoever you choose, no matter of societal views, whether your desire is to change your gender and be more comfortable in your body, or the desire to be of your beautiful culture and to have the same opportunities that so many in this world have that others don't. This is, for me, such a vital important shift in humanity and it is also where we allow our the time we've taken to evolve on a spiritual level and it's where social justice and worldly progress is where we ground this vibration into tangible form so that the societal flow of reality can be as relevant and reflective of heaven's perfection in the world as it is in the higher realms. 
So for me, this spirituality is not about hiding in a bubble. It is not about turning away from discomfort. It is not having anything to do with if I look at pain too long, I'm going to lower my vibration. To me, these are the superstitions that I was here to help unravel because we are here as light workers to shine light wherever light is needed and wherever there is a dark and shadowy corner of pain, suffering, and injustice, this is where we're called into action. And so the action at, at hand is letting people know, no matter how they're hurting and where that hurt came from, that we are here to listen. We are interested in hearing their life's journey and the journey of those that came before them so that we can allow pain to have the voice that has been taken from it for far too long. Far too long. And what's really interesting to notice is the reason why so many beings get so immersed in a spiritual journey through the healing of your familial lineage, the awakening of consciousness, the transformation of reality. You have gone through a spiritual journey and continue to go on a spiritual journey where you are being resolved and healed of your ego's most limiting story and belief system. And one of the main reasons this healing has been occurring to prepare us for this time is so that we have enough space to hold and to be present with others as they process the story of their journey. And when I say story, I don't say that in a disrespectful way because I think of the story of your lifetime and my lifetime, the story of humanity's evolution is sacred. I think of it from more of a shamanic point of view or a Native American point of view where the passing downs of the story is how we often can learn the greatest lessons. So to change the course of history instead of repeating the pain of the past. So when I say story, it is of respect. And when we are hearing the tales of other people's mistreatment and racism and, 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 and all of the things that needs to be heard right now, it is to be respected and honored and, and our willingness to listen attentively and with presence and interest and to ask questions so we can understand what it is like to live in the shoes that we haven't worn allows people to start to realize and allows all of us to realize that although we carry the wounds of a past, and although there are things that are happening in our reality that are here to be healed and resolved, our ability to be present and active in our listening with others lets others feel safe and helps others start to feel a pause from the repeating cyclical patterns of trauma in the subconscious and helps them to see that even though this has happened and may still be happening, we all start to realize that we're safe to face and heal this. And listening with interest is what helps us get there. And on the spiritual path, it's just been a very unconscious pattern for a lot of paths and a lot of approaches to we try to be light workers with other people and try to give them a better way of looking at it or what about this inside or if you did this, it would be different or and, and none of that, when we, when we get into reality, is actually the most functional way to connect with human beings, right? And it leaves a lot of people in a very interesting spiritual ego of like, oh, I just want to be around people of like mind who talk my same language. If we're all going to be of true like mind, the language we speak is the language of emotions, which is here's what happened and here's how it made me feel. And please, if you have the capacity, let my tale be heard. And please don't correct me or tell me a better way to do this. That's the space we can hold. 
I am not here to tell people what to do and what not to do. I am here to support the healing that is so dire and is so unfolding at this moment. I am not saying love instead of assembly. I am saying love as a healing force throughout assembly and assembling as an act of love for the voiceless who are regaining the power of their voice. And this process will not be rushed. And I certainly will only hold space for whatever is necessary for the healing of every human being. That is my commitment to you. That is my commitment to this planet. And it has never changed and it never will change or waver under any circumstances. There is nothing that is too atrocious for me to look at in the name of helping another person heal and know that they have a companion that is always here for them. And I'm here to assist us in becoming that kind of loving space for ourselves and for others. And so as we are, whether in our personal lives, in community settings, or whether through social media, which I know a lot of people are on because of the quarantining that seems to be happening. When we are listening to people or when we are reminding people that, hey, I'm, I'm here just to love you. I'm here just to love you. I'm here to listen. I wanted to give you a sentence, and you don't have to use the sentence like word for word, but I want to give you a sentence that kind of helps you get in the energy of how you cannot just be a good listener, but how you can let people know that you're someone who's here to listen, no matter their experiences of other people right now. So just take in the sentence, and I can talk about it for a second, and then we'll, and then we'll do some interesting repeat after me and invoke Archangel Michael for everyone's healing and well-being. So just take in the sentence and, and see how it feels to you. I would love to hear more about the events that led to these feelings. Imagine talking to someone who is going through the depths of what is being seen and unpacked right now in the world. And, you know, and let's even say it's, it's, it's about just the history of racial discrimination and, and, and all that's really being brought to light right now. Imagine saying to someone, who has had a different experience than you have ever had. I would love to hear more about the events that led to these feelings. That's letting someone know your path is valid. Your life story and history is essential. And I want to be able to value everything you struggled with and have overcome and still deal with so that I can honor the importance of your life's journey and how it contributes to the healing of our planet. Imagine showing pain that kind of respect. I would love to hear more about the events that led to these feelings. Because whether you've seen me at events or you see me respond to people on social media, you are watching me demonstrate this consciousness. I'm not someone trying to chase people away from discomfort. I want people to be free and liberated and feel great, but I am true to the process. And I am someone who's always willing to say to someone, whether someone else with the same gender or color of my skin has ever treated you in an unconscionable way, I am here to be different. And I would love to hear more about the events that led to these feelings. I want to know your feelings. I want, I'm here for you to share your feelings. And if you feel safe enough, thank you for Thank you for confiding in me in your deepest vulnerabilities. And even if you can't go there, just know that I'm here for you. You have a friend. And if you ever wish to share, I want to be first in line to know your journey. That's what we all need right now. Companionship, kinship, connection, compassion, consciousness, love, true love, not Choose love over fear because we're afraid if we stay in fear too long, we're going to manifest more misfortune. 
We don't manifest because of something we do right or wrong. We manifest based on what we as individuals in a world are ready to heal and overcome as a way of expanding the world for everyone's benefit. So let's please, please, as a community, as a world of spiritual beings, let's get over these spiritual superstitions rather quickly because life is far too real for concepts. But what never goes out of style is an interest in listening. And if, you, and if you are in a space where you just cannot be there for other people, and if you have the authenticity and awareness to be able to sense that, that means that you have to bring this willingness to listen to yourself first. So to help clear and create space where you can really be what other people need right now. Just take this moment and feel. I feel like this is not only just what I'm saying, but the energy behind it. I think this is really, really helpful and useful so that we can use the power of social media or anytime we're connecting with any human being, whether you're attending rallies or whether you're meeting with people in your community or talking with your relatives or on social media or whatever. Let us use the power of communication to let people know that we are interested in learning from their example, from knowing their history and allowing they to be honored as the magnificent expression that they've always been through the eyes of the universe. We are, we are the messengers of the universe reminding everyone how much they matter. And every part of every life matters. And right now, we need to allow significance to be given to the pain that is ready and is being shared. Feel that. And before we go into invoking Archangel Michael to add extra energetic and spiritual support for the world, for ourselves, for our families, for all families, let me read this quote again to you and you can feel how even more deep it is. No matter our life circumstances, we always have something to share and something to give. If feeling as if there's nothing to give, it only means something deeper is in need of being shared. No matter the similarities or differences that make up our appearances, all of us always have something to give and something to share. And for those that don't know what to give, it's because something deeper needs to be shared first. And as healers for ourselves and for others and for the planet, we are here to invite others to share what needs to be shared and to let them know they're safe and to share it on their own time, at their own speed, using the words they wish to use <clears throat> because we are supporting what needs to be healed. And this is the space <clears throat> that we learn to hold so not to micromanage someone's experience, to not subtly tell someone they're doing something wrong. No one's doing anything wrong. We're all just doing the best we can to heal what's been buried for lifetimes and generations. And it's deep and it's painful and it's scary and it's unnerving and it's unconscionable and it's mesmerizing. And we just take our time, always making time for ourselves when we have nothing to give to others. And we all work in shifts as light workers, so it's okay. But always with compassion and always with empathy. Always for the well being of all. Always for the healing and transformation of any individual and collective hardship.
one of my greatest heroes of all time has and always will be Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. That's the level I aspire for my effect to have. When that man speaks, it is a lion roaring in the jungle of reality. That's who I model and aspire to be like. That's my hero. And we can do that with such love and compassion as energetically sensitive beings. We just have to know that when we invite others to share, we are going to feel their pain. And it's going to be uncomfortable. And it may not shift as quickly as anyone would want. And isn't that okay? Because people who have endured profound persecution and relentless injustice deserve all the time and space they need to heal what they have the power to survive. For those that have survived an unthinkable past, don't we deserve the right to survive their sharing? I'm willing to listen to anything anyone wishes to share because it's a gift I'm giving by offering interest that people that came before me didn't show my fellow brothers and sisters. So as a way of bringing all of this together and uniting all of our intentions and energies to energetically bring greater sovereignty and peace and oneness to this planet and to let everyone have the space and the time to heal and to allow us to, to heal on the time frame of the wound, not by the desire of our ego or spiritual ego. Let us access some resources that we have connection to and bring it to this planet for the well-being of all who may not be aware of the power of archangels. So please, if you wouldn't mind, repeat after me. Archangel Michael, thank you for bringing peace to this planet. to every county and country, to every state and continent, to every person and community, and every neighborhood. Thank you for invoking the healing power that frees everyone of pain. And transmutes hereditary patterns. of persecution, inequality, systemic racism, socioeconomical imbalances. Racial profiling. any and all imbalances and acts of violence and unfairness thank you Archangel Michael French for transmuting these patterns and uplifting this planet into the acceptance of diversity. The 
glory of equality. With greater resources and opportunities. For all beings. And may it manifest. As individual growth. And collect and collective expansion and awareness and mindfulness. That manifests in the form as I play the perfect role for humanity. Through my willingness to listen. From the heart of compassion. Thank you, Archangel Michael, for keeping every person safe and peaceful. And thank you, Archangel Michael, for allowing all moments that are not meant to be peaceful to be catalysts of greater growth, peace, and harmony for all beings and endless generations to come. Thank you, Archangel Michael. Thank you. Just take a moment and feel that. We all have a contribution to make in this healing. Last weekend, when the protests really started to ramp up, I sat on my couch from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., obviously taking bath and breaks, and I watched CNN and I watched protests all over the country all day, both Friday, both Saturday and Sunday. And every time I saw something that was the cry of injustice. I anchored justice and resolve through the archangels every single time and I invoked the light countless times. Can't even count on Machanda. I did this. And for me, that is my contribution on the front lines. To protect, to protect the sovereignty and safety of all demonstrators on an energetic level. To assist in the healing of all aspects of persecution. And as these protests continue, I will continue to do my soul's work, my light work. And watch this. And hear of people's pain. And to be the light that illuminates this world out of the dark ages of injustice and separation. That's what oneness does. That's, and that's, that's my commitment. In whatever role you are meant to play, whether you're a demonstrator, a policymaker, or someone who is healing endless lifetimes for a lineage, or someone who takes the time to get to know someone else's experience and what it's like to live in shoes you've never worn, I thank you for being a part of the change we wish to see in this world. I thank you for bringing significance to the lives of those that have been taught that they don't matter, 
because we all do. And remember, no matter who you're talking to, no matter their pain, you don't have to teach them something that you don't think they know or give them a better way of looking at it. Through, through, the, through the wisdom of compassion, you can always say, I would just love to hear more about the events that led to these feelings. I would love to know you. This is what compassion does. It's that which is willing, in its infinite wisdom, to have the strength and courage to befriend pain. And when, when pain is befriended by compassion, only transformation and greater progress for all is born. This has been a unique call because we're living in a very unique time. And I truly honor and appreciate all of us who are here on this call and all of us that are living right now. We will continue to assemble as light workers and do everything we can to allow everyone to heal, to feel seen, and to know their value and relevance on our most beautiful planet. We live on a gorgeous planet and the time is now to no longer tolerate anyone being treated with such ugliness. And before anyone on a collective level can know there is light within them, it is our honor to treat them with the respect of knowing their light and to treat them with the respect and grace as the universe always does. I thank you for your commitment and your willingness to be alive in this most profound time. And until our next project resolution call, I am Matt Kahn, loving you, honoring you, and reminding you that anything that lurks within you, no matter how hurtful it is, I always want to hear about it, learn from it, to be an even better expression of source. So I can serve others more incredibly. From my heart to yours, we're getting through this. And it's an honor to be alive during this time. Please be safe. I love you. Namaste.